If you're perusing through the heights on any given afternoon, you're likely to see families and runners out and about. It's a nice area. I like being able to walk around. Police say what's harder to pick out are crooks staking out their next victim. They study this. I mean, they're professionals at what they do. They make a living off of stealing other people's property. According to police, criminals often drive into neighborhoods, drop off passengers who check to see who they can steal from discreetly. Many times they'll knock on the door of the house. Someone comes to the door, they'll say, hey, I'd like to mow your yard. The person says, no, they'll leave. If no one comes to the door, then they, they'll look around and make sure that no one's watching. Then they'll break in the house. While break-ins are fairly common, Lieutenant Hastings says what Robert Tucker says happened to him a week ago is not. They were able to get into our house and get a spare set of keys. There's no signs of any break-in or anything, um, but then just waited till, you know, early one morning. A neighbor reported someone walked straight up to his car, opened the door with a key and drove off. I think they were watching our house. Just a little frustrated and, you know, kind of angry that, you know, uh, I had gotten taken advantage of like that. Tucker says he sent out an email warning neighbors and learned he wasn't alone. We spoke to a neighbor who says someone broke in and stole a spare key during the day, then came back for the car that night. Lieutenant Hastings says it's pretty unusual, but police have recovered stolen cars filled with stolen keys. We had several bags of car keys that the people had stolen and they'd put GM keys on one ring and Ford keys on one and Chrysler keys on one. He says the best thing people can do is put up security signs, look out for their neighbors and keep their keys out of plain sight and hopefully out of criminals hands.